if you can give me some more information about what the National Parks Project is. Sure. That would be great. Yeah. Well, I'm teaming up with Nature Valley, and Nature Valley is uh, donating $400,000 to the National Parks uh, Conservation Association, and that's basically the advocacy group that represents Americans for our parks. And uh, we want to donate $100,000 more, and we're asking everyone to help. And by help, I mean all you have to do is buy especially marked boxes of Nature Valley granola, bar granola bars that say Preserve the Parks on it. And then you get home, and you go to PreserveTheParks.com, the official website, and you type in the 10-digit UPC code, and you've now donated $0.10 cents towards that $100,000. That will go towards the $400,000 to make it a half a million uh, dollar uh, co contribution to the parks and they have targeted six parks in particular and uh, definite projects that need to be done and so if you go to preserve the parks.com you can also see exactly where your money is going to so it's just a great way to get as many people involved as possible to contribute to what is our uh, responsibility and what is our privilege which is the uh, national parks okay I think it's a great program how did you get involved with it well, I think Nature Valley found out that I travel with Nature Valley bars wherever I go because I travel and it's really the perfect travel food in that uh, it withstands heat. I was just in Singapore where it was 105 degrees. Uh, it, it, it can withstand freezing temperatures. Uh, it can get wet and it won't get wet because of the packaging and my ultimate test, I can sit on it and it's still good. So I've been, uh, my bag always has uh, Nature Valley granola bars. <laughs> Okay, that's great. That's very cool. Yeah. And so as the spokesperson for Nature Valley's project, um, what is it that you are doing? Are you going to these different parks? How are you helping basically spread the word for the program? Just things like this, interviews. You know, my, my background is travel, and so I feel that the national parks represent the best in travel and that they give this, uh, I'm sorry, they, they, it's the promise of an adventure and exhilaration and beauty and peacefulness to everyone, uh, regardless of age, income, who you pray to, who you vote for. And uh, for me as a traveler and who's someone who is an advocate of travel, that's so important that it's accessible to every single person. Um, to make them accessible to every single person, they need more funding. And that's where Nature Valley comes in. And Nature Valley has partnered up with myself to get that message out as well as the NPCA to target the certain parks that need the most help and what those projects are so I was thrilled that I was asked to be a part of this because obviously it's just a it's a great it's a it's a great thing yes. to be able to to be a part of doing something good absolutely um, and so what are some of your favorite parks um, I love uh, uh, Grand Canyon is my favorite that was my first big national park I mm -hmm. ever went to uh, I love uh, Hawaii uh, Volcanoes National Park I saw that segment actually that you did. Oh, really? It's very interesting. So yeah, when they, we actually saw lava come up, I mean, it's pretty amazing. I think we were figuring out that uh, that must be the only park that's still growing, uh, you know, making its own land. Uh, actual parks they acquire more land, but this one actually makes its own. So it's a show off in the uh, national park world. Um, I love uh, I love parks like the USS Arizona Memorial, also in uh, Hawaii in Pearl Harbor. I love the parks that teach us about our history. They don't have to be Grand Canyon, Yellowstone big. They're the more intimate parks that give us pause, that teach us where uh, we were hundreds of years ago, maybe 50 years ago, and where we are today, and why, just in terms of what's going on with our Congress right now, why it's important that as Americans we understand how hard fought our country was for, and respect it, be reminded of it, and again, feel privileged to be a part of it. So there's so many lessons, I feel, that are tied into the national parks that go beyond just being in grand nature and really taking in the most beautiful spaces. It's also the intimacy of democracy and what it means to us. So uh, I, again, it's just this, you know, the national parks represent the most diverse um, park system in the world. And it's something that is absolutely imperative that we protect for generations. I'm just glad to be a part of it. Absolutely. I agree 100 percent with you. And actually, that's one of the uh, biggest reasons why we are doing Green XC. I don't know how much you know about us, but we are a group of young professionals um, and our goal is to ride share cross country. It's a campaign to raise awareness for national parks and forests amongst the young generation. Fantastic. So basically, we're going to be doing um, we're going to be doing videos, we're going to be doing photography and post daily on our blog to raise environmental issues as well as interview green businesses along our way. And we kick off our journey at the end of um, July, July 27th. And so our whole goal is to 
um, raise awareness for the national parks and forests, but within the young generation, because the problem is these are these young people are the ones that are the future, and they're if they're not visiting the parks, if they're not aware of them, they're not going to protect them. So we want to try to help them understand the importance. Um, is there something that your program is doing to uh, really target the young generation like we are? Well, I think it's just getting the word out that they're more accessible than everyone thinks. I mean, you have the Grand Canyons, you have the Yellowstones, but any you know trip online, you'll see that with close to 400 parks, there's one in absolute in each state. So the national park, a national park, is closer than you think. So it doesn't have to be this. Okay, I need to take two weeks off my job, which is really important right now, and I can't take time off from my work, so I can't go to the Grand Canyon. It doesn't have to be Grand Canyon big. You can find out if there's a national park in your state. There probably is because there's one in every single one except Delaware and so they can be a day trip you load your friends into your car and you head out and you experience the beauty in just one single day so it's more accessible it's quick uh, yet it serves its purpose which reminds you that these are a part of our country and they need to be visited that's that's the number one way to support your national park is to actually visit them but my hats off to you that's a great um, just a great mission that you have and, and uh, good luck Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, how did you get started in the in the travel world? It's all, your shows are very interesting. We love watching them. We're all travel enthusiasts in our in our group, and we are very grateful that you're taking the time to speak with us. But we'd love to hear how you got started and and how you ended up on the Travel Channel and how we can end up on the Travel <laughs> Channel. Sure, sure. Uh, I un I understand that completely. Um, I actually I went to school for musical theater and then came to New York City here where I'm at right now uh, to pursue that dream. And just one job led to another, and I was asked if I wanted to audition to be a host on the Travel Channel. And this was Very 11 cool. years ago, so I was like, what's a host? I'm not a host. <laughs> and, uh, and I had never traveled before. Um, I was in my early 20s, and so uh, when I started the job, I was actually really intimidated and because I thought I was really inexperienced. Everyone I had seen on TV in the travel uh, genre were experts, and I wasn't one. And so instead of trying to be fit myself into that expert in that host mode, I just was myself. And I just, right. for the camera, wanted to be somebody who people would want to spend time with. I wanted to bring people along with me on the journey. It wasn't about what right. to do, when and if you go to Rome. You're going to Rome with me right now, so come along. So my greatest piece of advice to sort of the new generation that will kick me out of my job. Um, Never. Is that, yeah, no, but uh, is to be yourself. Whatever right. you think your um, whatever you think your shortcoming is, whatever you think is maybe not what anyone wants to see, that's what you want to play up. That's what makes you unique, and play it up and enjoy passion, the passion of travel. And that's uh, that that's about it. That's uh, there's really no magic behind it, but it's just to be okay. yourself. Absolutely, and and what you're saying um, about bringing people along our journey, that's exactly why we're doing what we're doing here and why we're going to be documenting it through photos, through videos, and, and through daily posts because we understand that not everybody can get up and spend a three-week trip going across country. So we want them to visit the parks through us. So I think that that's exactly what you said. I think that that's great, and that's why people love your show and why we love your show. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, a quick question. What would you say our readers, we we, get, we have a lot of really um, loyal readers that are very dedicated to helping the parks and the forest. What would you say, what can they do to help, um, you know, with this program and overall with protecting the national parks and forests? Sure. Well, a great website to know is preservetheparks.com. And on that website, you're going to see the parks that will be helped if you simply, you know, buy granola bars, which I know if you're going to the parks, everyone's got granola bars in their, in their backpacks. Um, of course, then the money then goes towards the parks. Also, you can find out which parks you can volunteer at. Uh, and the most important thing is to visit. You can also donate more money, but I certainly understand in, in my 20s, I had zero. So, right. Um, but, so, and so you want to keep hold on to your money, but that means you've got time and, and you can volunteer. And again, it doesn't mean you have to do this in Yellowstone or take a week off to do a, a major volunteerism project. It's just about locating the, the national parks that are in your own neighborhood, maybe an hour away that you can contribute uh, a Saturday, a Sunday, or, or, or sometime. Uh, whether it's pick up trash, whether it's pick weeds of invasive plants, whether it's stuff right. envelopes, I'm not sure, but uh, um, everyone needs a little extra help. Absolutely, and actually, it's it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, we have also implemented a plant a tree campaign that we're going to be doing. Um, so as we go from forest to forest, we're going to be planting trees. Aww. And 
yeah, so we hope that that will encourage people our age and our generation to get out there and do even, you know, one tree at a time, one person at a time, every little thing makes a difference. So I think it's absolutely great what you guys are doing. Great, great. And that's a perfect point, a perfect point to end on. Everybody can make a difference. There is no small contribution. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you so much, for Samantha, for your time. And we hope that we will speak with you again in yeah. the near future. Have a wonderful yeah. journey. Great what you Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.